People think that the president of the United States has the power for debt forgiveness. He does not. He can postpone. He can delay. But he does not have that power. That would that has to be an act of Congress. Ah, now you might have thought that. Apparently nobody clued in, Nance, and welcome back to the program, your hateful curmudgeon here today. No one informed Speaker Pelosi that you could use the HEROES Act and just kind of, I guess, get around it, which I still, we've, we've been reading it, and I still think that's a stretch. I don't see how that survives legal scrutiny, but I only pretend to be a lawyer and a business person on television and radio if you're watching the simulcast of the nationally syndicated show. Joining us right now, the amazing Carol Roth, because I cannot wait for her to break this down. She is a recovering investment banker, very successful author, television pundit, New York Times selling, New York Times bestselling author, I should say, and her book, The War on Small Business. If you haven't read it, I don't know why you hate capitalism in America and everything that's good. <laughs> Carol joins us now. So my dear friend, this, uh, I, I don't know how that using the HEROES Act is justification for it, because we're not even in a pandemic anymore. But further, this, how, we're ra- so we just raised taxes on people, and now we're asking the people that we raise the taxes on to foot the bill for the collegiate welfare of all of the progressive white voters that typically lean Democrat anyway. I just am curious as to your reaction on this. Oh, I think it's great. I mean, isn't there anything you'd like to ask Santa Claus Biden for? I mean, I, I've got my eyes on on some shoes and a train set. I mean, listen, we can all agree that there is a problem with student lending in this country. I mean, the government is the largest predatory lender. They go out to people who are teenagers, minors, and sign them up for things. They have no idea what it is that they're signing, you know, five figures, maybe up to six figures in loans. They're not dischargeable in bankruptcy like everything else. And as the government has nationalized the bulk of student lending, it has allowed these colleges, enabled them to increase the cost of these worthless educations uh, exponentially and they're not they have no skin in the game so so there's definitely something wrong and it makes me feel bad for people who've been caught up in this yeah but to all of a sudden say well we're going to now make ten thousand dollars disappear as if that's a thing like what if we could just make debt disappear we've got 30 trillion dollars in national Woo! debt there's no repercussions <laughs> let's just you know make that go by the wayside but to you know pretend that that actually is going to do anything but further enable these schools to continue to rip off young people and to have this giant wealth transfer from the working class and the middle class to these colleges, to these administrators. I mean, that's basically the drumbeat of the Democrats and the Biden administration. We are going to transfer wealth. We are no longer the party, not that they really ever were, but they like to pretend they were the party of the the working class person. Um, And we're just going to extract every dollar from you, try to make you dependent upon the government so we can secure our power. And it's just frustrating all the way around. There's just nothing good that has come out of this. Yeah, we're talking with Carol Roth. And, And the other question, because someone had posed this, and I don't, I don't know the number of states, or I know it's different state by state. Some states will tax any kind of debt forgiveness. I know the public the public service loan forgiveness, that's something federally that they don't tax on, but I know a number of states do. So aren't people going to be still in some areas paying tax on this? So I have not studied this deeply enough. I've only read the headlines on Twitter, um, but it does seem that there was some, you know, one of these millions of acts that have been passed over the, the last year and a yeah. half that that's attached to that is that any student loan debt forgiveness may not be. But again, I mean, it's still a win, even if you do get taxed on it. I mean, it's still money that's coming, you know, coming out of my pocket, going to somebody else's pocket, same with yours, same with everybody listening. And it's really frustrating for all of the people who decided not to go to college, went to to a college that they could afford because they couldn't afford the one of their dreams, who were like me, who put the cardboard box with the sheet over it as my bedside table when I graduated from college so that I could pay off my loans. You know, everybody who's done the right thing. Um, it's frustrating 
for. But at the same time, we're in the middle of this giant cash giveaway to Ukraine, to the chips companies, to everybody else. So it's kind of like, well, everybody else is getting something. So isn't it okay that the average person is getting something? It makes it harder to argue when it's, you know, again, just this giant game show bonanza of, you know, you get something and you get free stuff. And unfortunately, as we saw with the American Rescue Plan, where stimulus checks were given away, you got your $1,200 and now you're paying six to $10,000 more this year in inflation. It's not a free thing. That, that, That There's no like magic money tree that just makes this all work these are obligations and the money and the the repercussions of that come from somewhere. We're talking with the brilliant Carol Roth and Carol too. I, I, I think you, I think you may have tweeted this. I want to make sure I'm attributing this correctly because I saw it somewhere. It said, you know, I'm totally fine. Well, fine, go ahead and forgive all this stuff. Just make the colleges pay for it. Colleges and universities should pay for this. I was looking at all the endowments they have. Like Yale has something like a $38 billion endowment. Uh, all of them, billions and billions of dollars of endowments. And I was looking at some of the statistics. I think it's, it's something like every, for every dollar that the federal government makes available for student loans, like colleges increase their tuition by 60 cents on the dollar. Why, with all of their billions of dollars in endowments, why, they definitely have the money to, to do. So why can't they do it? They should, because they've been raising their rates since they were federalized in 2010. Why can't they just pay for it? Yeah, I mean, that was my tweet, so I will take credit for it, is that, I, you know, I am in favor if you want to cancel this, but let's put the recourse back on the schools. Let's make them fire some of these ridiculous administrators. Mm. You know, it's not like they have uh, bulked up the teachers in order to improve the learning and improve the value of the accreditation, they have just made the cash grab much bigger. And so not every school has the crazy endowments. Yes, we have the Harvards and the Yales and now the University of Texas system that I call hedge funds masquerading as universities because that's basically what they are, you know, 40 plus billion or whatever it is for Harvard and pretty close the same for the the Texas system. Um, But, you know, those are necessarily the ones that have the students with the problems because they do actually fund a lot of their schools it's kind of the the whole broad system and that amount of endowments is really skewed but think about how much we give to the colleges in terms of their tax-free status in terms of tax dollars and then you know this this basic um, enablement of you know, this cash grab because we've nationalized the lending and they have no risk in the equation. So that needs to be reformed. They need to be on the hook for part of it. They should be forced to slash their budgets. They should be forced to, you know, you should be able to sue your university. If you are getting an accreditation and you're not able to make enough money to pay it back, that's a serious problem. So either they sold you a bill of goods or you didn't do what you're supposed to do. And that should be sorted out amongst them, right? I mean, that that's the issue. That's a great point. Yeah, unfortunately, we have these accreditations and people like to conflate that with education. Education is valuable, but you can learn things for free. MIT has got its entire coursework available on the internet. You can educate yourself. But if you're going to pay for an accreditation, it has to have a return on investment. And it's why we need to change the process of the loans. So if you're going into a high value field, you might be able to take on a bigger loan. And if you're studying underwater basket weaving or gender studies or whatever it is that maybe you don't get as big of a loan let the market start that sort that out and make the colleges have to respond in kind that will change everything overnight and it's just not part of this if they were saying hey we're going to forgive ten thousand dollars but we're going to do it and we're reforming the whole system i'd be like yeah it kind of sucks but at least we're solving the problem we're just not solving the problem we're just transferring wealth from one group of people to another group of people that's a great point. Talking with Carol Roth, the author of The War on Small Business, which you can which you can and should buy now if you haven't already. The other thing, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, but because I, I didn't take out student loans. I worked two jobs, three during Christmas. I, I literally worked unloading boxes. I was a uh, I worked in retail. I was a waitress. And then I worked um, unloading shipments for Old Navy in college in the back. Love so it. I was the person who would take the big boxes of jeans off the truck. And that's because it was great money for Christmas. And when you were talking about the the cardboard box table, that was there's like there's this kinship that people have that struggled 
and that you're supposed to be like that when you first start out in life. You're not supposed to come out with a silver spoon. You know, you're supposed to, it, it gives you character. And it really feels like our society, because I think it's a twofer. We have the government that totally went in on this whole scheme. They wanted to nationalize this. The colleges loved it because here, if they're, you know, you got to get student loans. Yeah, we're going to raise our cost of tuition if you got guaranteed loans coming in. But then we have a society that I think brainwashed everyone into thinking that you only matter in a profession if you have gone to a four year university and you get some BS degree in humanities, even if it's like they offer degrees in women's studies. I mean, it's you're basically getting degreed on what it is to have a vagina. I just it blows the mind. <laughs> I, I Which wanted to get your, can't define, by the way. Yeah, apparently. Yeah, <laughs> apparently you also have to be a biologist too. Uh, I I wanted to get your thoughts on this because it's it, we have to reform this the system, and I love your ideas. But what do we do to change the way that society views this? Because they've looked down on like trade school folks, the people who are making dependable cash now. They're they've looked down on them for so long. Yeah, it's a huge issue, and I think we need to have more discussions and more people, um, you know, kind of talking about, first of all, the merits of any job. Every job is important and valuable and essential, and we should be walking in, um, as I do, the airport bathroom and saying hello to the person who's, you know, there and doing a great job mopping the floor every one of those jobs is incredibly valuable. Because we have talked down so many of these jobs, there is a huge shortage. I mean, think about what's going on with airline pilots. There is not going to be enough airline pilots for the future. We're not gonna be able to get anywhere because people sort of thumb their noses there. The same thing with plumbers. Yet you have these people, you know, you get these these women on Twitter, and it's always a woman on Twitter who's like, well, I have a, a PhD, MBA, MMA, MFA, CFA, and whatever. And, you know, I'm going, well, you're a moron then. I got a <laughs> major degree and I got myself promoted past the point of needing to go back to school. Like, you're paying that much money for all that? You sound really dumb. But they seem to think that that confers some sort of special status to them. Um, there was probably a point in time when there was more scarcity in terms of education that having the education mm -hmm. did confer some special status to you. But we, everybody has the opportunity to get it. And, you know, that brings down sort of the, the net value of, you know, what is we're offering. And particularly now that there is no sort of return on investment underwriting metric that is tied to giving loans or tied to degrees. Every degree costs the same. You know, my degree, undergrad degree from Wharton, that when I went into investment banking is the same as, you know, pretty much anything else that you study. And the marketplace doesn't value the accreditation of yeah. that the same way. That's, that is such an important point. And I'm so glad that you're out there making it. Carol Roth, you can get her book, The War on Small Business. Follow her on Twitter, Carol J. S. Roth. Always good to see you, my friend. Thank you so much for your time today. Appreciate you. Of course.